Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. If you would like to submit a question to be addressed by this channel or in the Ask Dave column in QST, or maybe just by direct answer, send a question to me at askdave at ARRL dot O-R-G. Okay? And uh, I'll take a look at it and see what we can do. Now, I will warn you, uh, the stack sometimes gets very large, so I will try and get an answer to you uh, on this channel at some point. But uh, be patient. This particular question is from 2022. This is from Rob Bird, WD4IFT. Okay. And it's interesting, his email, Robin's Nest. Okay, I am planning to erect a fan vertical. Okay, a fan vertical is just like fan dipole. You start in the center, you got 40 meter, underneath it 20, 15, and so on. Uh, there was a video fairly recently where we made one. And I'll have my assistant put the video number uh, right there. And we'll put a link to it in the comments below. But it talks about fan dipoles. And you can make a fan vertical, which could very well be a pre-made kit, such as the DX Commander. Yeah, actually, I'd kind of recommend that. This would be located in the backyard so as to raise little interest. Uh, we just tested an antenna on this channel, a new MFJ, well, it's Cushcraft antenna that does the traditional bands, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And it is less than 20 feet tall, whereas the DX Commander is about 30 feet tall. Of course, the DX Commander is black, uh, which helps. Uh, this antenna is, the one from MFJ is short enough that uh, it can't be seen from the front of the house. And if you've got some tall or any kind of trees at the back, you could hide this thing in the trees and nobody would know. Okay. Now, I live on the west coast of Florida. I used to live in Tampa myself. And as such, I have to contend with bugs and critters as well as temporary high winds or hurricanes. Additionally, I want to make sure I can mow the lawn without worrying about chewing up the ground base radials. I have three questions. Okay, let's take a look at them. Since my office in Hamshack to be is near an outer wall on the other side of the utility ground, I will want to run an RF ground wire, number six stranded copper wood work just fine. You can get it at any of the hardware stores, big or small through the outer wall to the copper where I can attach the RF shack ground as well as the coax shield to a ground rod. I would recommend some lightning arresters in there, especially since you live on the west coast of Florida, which is the lightning capital of the world. I used to live in Tampa, like I said. Um, during lightning season, I would leave everything in your shack disconnected except when you're going to use it rather than the other way around. Okay, now uh, he also talks about possibly a wide ground strap, they'll all work. Okay, to attach to an RF ground as well as the coax shield to a ground rod, copper or copper over steel. Copper over steel is what you get these days. Trying to buy a solid copper ground rod, the problem with that is one, copper is soft, so you're going to bend that thing all over the place. That's why these ground rods are steel with a copper coat. I also plan to ground the antenna at the base, which you can, with another ground rod. Okay, question. Uh, depending on your antenna, by the way, we're gonna have some radials in here somewhere. Okay. I also plan to ground the antenna at the base. Question, should I be concerned with the wire getting too hot or should I just run it through the outside wall in PVC conduit? Mine is. And uh, I'll have my assistant take a picture where they come through the wall. It is a piece of PVC. Okay, let's see. 
I'm not sure, quite sure which wire I should use through the wall. Use that number six because that'll come to your in-station single ground point, which is usually a short piece of copper pipe. Then you bring the grounds from all the pieces of equipment in your station to that one ground. Okay. Um, when tuning the vertical radiating elements in a fan vertical, at which point should I stop cutting the vertical elements as I know I will not get a perfect match? When you get the lowest SWR, I would bring that vertical element up through a hole, back down, and wrapped around on itself for six or eight inches. Okay, because you're going to have to adjust that to get the best for where you're going to operate. If you're going to operate mostly voice, you're going to tune for the upper part of 40 meters. If you do just FT8, then you're going to tune for the lower part. But I think you will find that if you tune it for the middle of the band, you will have acceptable SWR across the entire band. Okay. I am planning to bury the coax, RG213 or RG8X, in a wide mouth PVC pipe. You have previously mentioned that no matter what I do to keep water out of the pipe in the ground, water will get into it. That is true. Uh, you recommend drilling holes in the bottom to allow the water to escape. Question, what hole spacing do you recommend and what size drain hole do you suggest? Well, I would make it fairly big, about three eighths, something like that. Um, maybe every six inches, every foot. Now that coax that you put in there should be one single run. And check it carefully to make sure it's not cut or sliced or chipped or piece worn off where you can see the braid. You want one single run. Also, you wanna make sure that you get direct burial cable so that it will stand that environment down there. Can you bury direct? very cable directly? Yes, you can. But a lot of people prefer the extra protection of that PVC pipe, which will keep gophers and, and voles and things like that from enjoying a nice feast on your coax. They actually seem to love the plastic covering for some reason. Okay, that will work. Now, as far as your radials are concerned, I don't know if you've got an antenna that doesn't need radials. If you do put in radials, put in the ground rod at the center. Uh, DX Engineering makes a radial plate that you can put around the bottom of the antenna. And it's got a bunch of uh, holes drilled in it. It's steel. So you can put a bunch of steel, uh, these steel um, hardware in there, uh, stainless steel. And you can put uh, whatever I, with my radials, I like to put little uh, automotive doohinkies on the end so that they'll fit over the screw and then I can screw the screw down and I know it'll stay there. Now I can press fit those and then solder them. Okay, the reason for the compression fit is what I was talking about lightning. The soldering's gonna be well out in the backyard, so if it happens to spit a little bit, I don't care. But I just want to make sure that that doesn't pull out. Now, radials in ground. You got to be careful. Radials are a counterpoise, not a ground. There is a difference. The counterpoise is more capacitive, but the whole radial field acts as a storage for the electricity on the half cycle. When the antenna goes negative, You've got positive going out this way and going up this way. Now, does that mean that radials have to have a specific length? As it turns out, no, unless the bottom of the antenna is elevated, in which case you want tuned radials, at least two per band. Uh, fun tuning, something like that. So there you have it, all kinds of ideas on that. Make sure that uh, your ground rod uh, put your lightning arresters in and make sure that your ground rod is bonded to your utility ground rod. Uh, I think what code is asking for, I think I'm not an electrician, so I'm not giving electrical advice. I'm a ham radio operator. I'll give ham advice, 
Number six, bear, stranded copper wire. And no, it's not really cheap, but it's really effective. And then bury that directly uh, as you go around to your utility ground, because now all of a sudden that's acting like extra ground rod too. So that's why you want it uninsulated. All right, so I hope I've answered your questions. And he's saying here, P.S. I'm also going to take your advice and use lightning arresters at both the RF ground as well as the antenna base. Well, Rob, thank you very much for your question. Thank you for writing in to Ask Dave. Uh, anybody can do that. Uh, you can send me a question. Uh, there's a screen coming up that will tell you different ways you can contact me and also ways you can support this channel. Please subscribe. Become an Augie. Until we next meet, 73.